This video is a review of the Viasat satellite internet that we installed aboard SV Delos. We're gonna be covering a bunch of different topics today uh, and I'm pretty excited about it. The first thing we're gonna talk about is how this all came about, like what's the history, how do we get the system, cover a little bit about what we installed and the installation process itself. Uh, second thing we're gonna be covering is some technical specs and performance, like what kind of speeds, uh, download bandwidth, upload bandwidth, like latency and applications that the system has been working well, and actually just how we've been using it. Uh, third, we're gonna be talking about performance at sea. So how's the system perform like way up north when we were in Maine near the Canadian border, uh, sailing all the way down to Panama? Like, is it affected by rain, by heavy seas when the boat rolls, uh, that sort of stuff. And then we're gonna be covering like reliability and issues. Like how has it performed from a reliability standpoint? How has the equipment held up? Uh, have we had any problems with software or hardware along the way? And if those were able to be resolved uh, remotely. And then finally, we're gonna talk about like, is it available? Can you get one? And if so, how much is the equipment and uh, how much are the costs? Uh, a huge special thanks to our patrons for submitting the questions. I know you guys have been following along uh, how we've been using the dome and you submitted lots of cool questions and I'm looking forward to answering them for you today. It's worth noting that we're not being paid by Viasat for this review. However, they did provide the equipment and the service for us to review and test. So let's just dive straight into it and we'll do a little recap of how this all came about. So I was actually at the Southampton Boat Show uh, in the UK and I met a gentleman who worked for Viasat by the name of Bill. Uh, we sat down and we had a few beers together and Bill said, hey Brian, I have an idea. We're trying to create a, a new system based on our existing equipment that will work really well uh, in the maritime world. And I'd like to see if we could take one of the systems that's actually meant for a like gigantic super yacht or commercial vessel and scale it to fit on SV Delos. Uh, so Bill uh, and his team flew to Antigua. I'm Bill Sullivan. This yep. is Jeff, also from Viasat. And this is Grant, he's actually the leader. And what's so. the dish like? It's like a proper it's dome. like a proper dome. It's like a proper <laughs> dome that you see on the super yachts, right? We're about to enter the maritime market and it's a great platform for us to do some testing and do, uh, you know, see the thing out in the real world and also we'll, have we'll an use it for you. Yeah, certainly. exactly, exactly. And also <laughs> give give Dulles the opportunity to actually upload your videos and do That's some live be streaming. crazy. Yeah. We installed the dome and then we installed all the blow ducks equipment. Okay, you got that in, you take that. I got this one. Drop in the ocean. Will it fit through there? Oh! Okay, ready to go down? Yeah. <laughs> How much does this thing weigh? 37 kilos. 37 kilos. It's comically big. Kaza, come take a look at this. I put a server rack in our boat. Can you see it? It's a server rack. Isn't that cool? Oh, cool. <laughs> oh, cool. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Hi, Sierra, what do you think? All right, Kaza, we're tracking the antenna. I heard some excitement We've got here. some things, now we're gonna run a speed test. There you go. Okay, go, go, go. And then he pretty much just set us loose. He said, hey guys, go put the system through its paces. Let's see how it works. Let's find any technical problems, report back to us. We'll work with the team. So over the past years, we've had the opportunity to sail uh, with the system on board from Antigua uh, in the Caribbean, all the way along the island chain up the east coast of the US to Canada, and then back all the way to Panama, so we've covered a, a wide variety of, of weather from freezing temperatures and high winds to the sunny, still tropics of Panama. Uh, we've put it through its paces, and I think we have a pretty good understanding of how the system works in a variety of conditions. And so that's what we're gonna be sharing with you today. All right, let's get right into the questions. Once again, thanks to our patrons for submitting these. Uh, first question is from Paul. Paul asks, how fast is the system in reality, both speed and latency, and does the speed match up with what the Viasat specs say they should be? Uh, actually, the answer, it's pretty fast. Um, Viasat quotes download speeds from 20 
uh, to 50 megabits per second down with a latency in the 750 millisecond range. Now the latency is higher than you're gonna see on a mobile or a, a normal broadband because it's a geostationary or geosynchronous satellite up in orbit. So the, the distance to go from uh, the antenna on Delos up to the satellite to the ground relay station uh, is a lot longer because uh, it just has that much more distance to follow. Um, I'm, I, I just, the, the speed test that you're seeing right now, I am running from our location here in San Blas in Panama. So we are literally in the middle of nowhere and we're actually exceeding uh, the results a little bit. And that's typical. Um, we're seeing pretty good speeds and we have no complaints about the performance of download or upload speed. Um, it actually works pretty good in that regard. Uh, Follow-up question from Jacob. Is it possible for you to upload your raw video content? And if so, how long to upload like 500 megabytes? Uh, yes, it is absolutely possible. So, you know, we're, we're making the videos, we're filming here, we're working with our editors, uh, Kirill, who is in Indonesia, and Jordan, who is in Sri Lanka. And we're literally using Dropbox to upload files and I'm uploading gigabytes at a time. I don't know exactly how long it would take to upload 500 megabytes, but uh, uh, like a five gigabyte video we're able to upload in two to three hours usually. Okay, question from Jenny Stowe. Uh, to add on to Paul's question about speed, is the speed consistent between different geographic regions? Uh, P.S. Thanks for answering these questions. So yeah, we, we have seen the speed be pretty consistent. Uh, it was fast up in Maine, it's fast here in Panama, it's fast in the middle of the ocean. That really hasn't seemed to make a difference uh, for us at all. Uh, probably one of the reasons is this access is the Viasat 2 satellite, which is over the equator. And as we move, uh, the look angle of the satellite just changes. Uh, like this, which means that we're always pointed right at the satellite. Okay, a uh, question from Dave Crombie. He's most curious about weather. Uh, how does rain thick and thick clouds affect its line of sight and performance? Uh, he's been using Viasat a lot lately on planes and it's pretty stout, but they are above the clouds. Uh, I have to say, I really haven't noticed any difference at all in the signal or speed based on clouds. The only thing that we've noticed is if it rains pretty heavy and it has to be like one of those torrential tropical downpours, it will lose signal for that downpour as soon as the rain like eases up a little bit and turns to like a normal rain or a drizzle it uh, locks back on and we're, we're back in business within a minute or two. But if, if you do have a extremely heavy torrential downpour, then um, it will affect the service. Renee says, I work from home and my day is split between online meetings and software dev work. I'm planning on moving onto a sailboat before long. Would this device be suitable for someone using it all day with sufficient bandwidth for MS Teams? I actually don't know what the bandwidth for uh, MS Teams is, but my guess is if it's not affected by the latency of the system around you know 650 to 750 milliseconds, which we're seeing, then there should be plenty of bandwidth. Um, there's a follow-up here from Micah Melnick along the same lines, can you reliably do a Zoom or Skype meeting? How about YouTube Live? So yeah, we, we've used this for um, Skype, uh, Zoom. We use it to transfer files via uh, Dropbox, um, Facebook Messenger, like uh, Instagram Live, YouTube Live, like all that stuff seems to work. Sometimes the live social media streaming services get a little bit funny because of the latency. Um, but uh, other than that, like you can just dial that into the software encoder and just buffer a little bit more, but it does seem to work pretty good. Um, let's see, another part of that question, what applications and services work well, what doesn't? So I talked, yeah, Dropbox, Zoom, Skype, Facebook Messenger, Netflix, normal email, YouTube, social media, all seem to work pretty well. There's another follow-up from John Wiles. Have you tried to remotely control any LAN-based computers via RDP, which is Remote Desktop Protocol, TeamViewer, or the like. Uh, I actually, as, as a little test, I spun up a, a, a Windows server 
on uh, Amazon uh, web services and I was able to com communicate with that server. There is a, a slight delay because of the, of the latency, but uh, I found it to be perfectly usable. Uh, I've, al I've also used like S uh, SSH to remotely access like uh, Linux machines to configure like firewalls for our web server and stuff and that worked just fine. Um, Tristan Gonzalez, what kind of delay is there during a Zoom meeting? Is it doable or awkward? Well, I've never been at a Zoom meeting that's not a little bit awkward, uh, to be honest, but uh, it's, you know, it's just the way it is. Uh, the latency uh, doesn't really seem to be that much of an issue as long as people understand that you're dealing with uh, a satellite connection and you, know, you have to have like a uh, two thirds of a second like sort of pause, but once you get into that rhythm, uh, I found that it actually works pretty well. And we've done a lot of Zoom meetings when we were locked down in the Bahamas uh, for the three months. We actually did a number of interviews with like the BBC and CNN and some other news outlets. And we just did them in Zoom meeting and uh, it was perfectly usable, worked just fine for us. Uh, David Seabrook, how does the device itself handle buffering or is that done with other devices such as your smart TV or Roku? Uh, so as far as I know, uh, the Viasat equipment, the switches, the router, they don't really handle uh, any buffering. The buffering is done by your local application. So when we're watching it on the smart TV, you know, if we're watching Netflix, uh, that's responsible for the buffering. Um, by the way, Netflix actually works pretty darn good. It's, it's, it's a trip. If you want to be able to be in the middle of nowhere and uh, streaming Netflix, it, it actually works really well. Uh, Paul, how much power does it consume? Uh, so there's a bunch of different components to the system, and I didn't take the time to break each one down. But in general, you have the antenna dome, you have the antenna control unit, which is two boxes, and then you have a switch. You have uh, a mini PC that handles some of the tracking, logging, and the routing between the mobile booster um, and the, the wide area network from the satellite. All of those things take power. All together, as we're sitting here at anchor without the boat moving, it's taking about 150 to 170 watts of power. So on a 12 volt boat, that would be like what? just over 10 amps, maybe 10, 11, 12 amps, something like that. So it is a fairly significant uh, amount of power. Uh, when we're moving in a heavy sea state, uh, you know, the, the dome itself, the Viasat uh, or the um, Sailor 600 uh, is a three axis stabilized dome. So it has a motor in there that's keeping the dish pointed at the satellite and controlling as the boat is pitching and rolling. Uh, that can take a, put the power up above 200 watts. So I've seen it consume altogether as much as like 250 watts, which would probably be close to 20 amps on a 12 volt system. So the power is not negligible. It, it does take quite a bit of power. Uh, and because of that, we tend to run it uh, in the morning uh, and in the afternoon when we're doing our work and the rest of the time, like at night, we leave it, we leave it turned off because it is a pretty huge power draw for us. Um, Eric Bowman asks, do we have a static or dynamic IP address in Viasat? And does it support IPv6? Uh, we have a dynamic IP address. It, it doesn't change very often, but it can change. It's not static. I really don't know of any reason why the system uh, Viasat as an ISP wouldn't be able to provide you a static IP address if you asked for it. Um, does it support IPv6? That I do not know. Um, I ran a little IPv6 test and as it sits right now, we are not uh, IPv6 compatible. I'm not sure if it's possible or not, sorry. Um, follow up from Samuel Barbaris. Is there a carrier grade NAT in place? Is it technically possible to establish connections from outside your boat? What type of encryption is used? You know, actually I don't know um, the configuration of the NAT. NAT stands for Network Address Translation, I believe, uh, and what grade it is or what equipment. I do know that uh, it's it's a pretty good uh, switch and, and system use. Uh, I'll show some B-roll of it during this video, and then maybe if you still have a question, you can look up and see if it's, if it's possible to do what you want to do with the NAT there. Um, Larry Sumner says, how is the reception and loss of signal also, any restrictions by country? Um, okay, so this might be a good time to talk about the coverage area. I'm gonna go ahead and pop up 
uh, a graphic from Viasat showing the coverage extending from Europe across the Atlantic, across uh, the US to the West Coast. That's coverage that is current from uh, the Viasat 2 network and in the works is uh, the Viasat 3 network, which will extend coverage uh, out into the Pacific, I believe. Um, we'll refer to the chart for that. Um, and we have had really good luck uh, during that area, getting uh, within that area, we have, have had uh, great, great signal, great reception, good speeds, and um, it's worked as advertised in there. Uh, any restrictions by country? Uh, I do know that, that some places, particularly when we were in India, they uh, uh, threw a stink about us having a satellite phone on board. Um, that's going to be specific country to country. I think you're going to have to check on that. Matt Phillips and Sadie Johnson both ask, uh, is your connection up 24 seven or are you only connected as needed? Yeah, we, uh, we, it, it would be too much power for us to leave it up uh, 24 seven. So we're just basically turning it on for a few hours in the morning and then a few hours in the afternoon. If we have a bunch of footage to upload or a video to upload, then I will leave it on a little bit longer. But um, you know, it's, it's actually really nice to be able just to go and turn the internet off um, and just be here and, and present. Dan, uh, regardless of bandwidth, has it been reliable? Uh, yeah, we've, we found the system to be very reliable. We've actually experienced uh, only two outages with it. <clears throat> the first time uh, was uh, the mini PC that we were using to, to balance the bandwidth uh, actually overheated. So it was just a, a matter of, of not having uh, proper ventilation uh, for that unit. It got it got a little bit too hot, uh, it shut down and never started up again. Uh, Viasat had to send us out a new one and they sent us a nice little rugged PC that seems to be more resilient. We've had that one for what, uh, about a year and a half now uh, and it's worked just fine. How's the equipment holding up in the salty air? Um, you know, one of the reasons why this system is uh, is so robust is it's, it's a marine quality system. So this is not, you know, a land-based satellite dome. It's a, it's a marine quality um, Sailor 600, uh, which means it's, it's built to withstand salty air, salt spray, uh, high wind speeds, uh, and all these things. And so, you know, that I haven't noticed any corrosion or any degradation on the equipment outside and the equipment inside, you know, Dallas is a pretty dry boat. So, uh, you know, it's all of our computers and our laptops and our cameras, they've been on board for years. Uh, and we keep, a, we try our, our best to keep salt uh, outside of Delos to keep the inside dry. And uh, we haven't had any problems with the, the server rack mount equipment or anything else inside. So that seems to be pretty good. Uh, Jim Kowalski, can you run a packet loss and jitter test? Okay, sure, I'll do that. Results right here. Michael Conway, how much motion of the boat can it handle without cutting out? So <clears throat> I remember being in a really nasty uh, cross sea between uh, after leaving Maine and heading on our way down to Boston. And I swear Delos was probably rolling through 20 degrees to either side. It stayed locked in through that, there was one roll that we took that must have been 30 degrees and we went way over and then it lost signal. It took it maybe a minute to, to get back on. It wasn't very long. So it's pretty reliable as far as the motion of the boat under normal sailing conditions. Um, I'd say that, you know, it, it, it just locks on. It stays locked on even when we we're... <clears throat> Even when we were beating around uh, Cape Hatteras in like super rough conditions, just the boat pounding, uh, we were able to log on, check internet, check messages, things like that. So that works pretty good. Uh, follow up by Stephen Bowen. Is there any difference with signal on passage versus anchor versus moored? No, uh, because the dome is a three axis stabilized dome. Uh, it tracks and works the same uh, regardless of the orientation or how the boat is moving. Follow up by Emily, how heavy is it? And are you afraid of it ripping off in heavy winds and seas? Uh, the dome itself weighs 37 kilos. Uh, and I'll convert that to pounds down here. Uh, we pulled off one solar panel when we installed this. That solar panel was 17 kilos. So it's 10 kilos more than a 300 watt solar panel. Um, we have a pretty substantial arch on the back and, you know, honestly, Delos is, is in the low 20 uh, tons. Her dry weight is, you know, 36 or 37,000 pounds. And so a 37 kilo dish on the back really hasn't made much difference to us. 
uh, that I've uh, that I've noticed at all. Um, I can't remember what the win rating for the dome is, but we've uh, had it uh, in winds ranging like in the low 60s, uh, low 60 knot range, um, and uh, absolutely no no problems at all. Uh, let's see, Stone616 asks, what are some negatives and positives from a family time standpoint? Uh, well, I guess uh, the negatives are is you know the same negatives as anything. If you have constant internet access, then you're you're very prone to checking you know Instagram messages, um, all these sorts of things. And of course, when we're out here sailing, uh, we we like to be offline. We like to spend you know time outside. Um, the nice thing about this unit is it has a power switch, and so you know we routinely turn it off. We use it for work. Um, and uh, we turn it off when we're not using it, but when we need to use it, then it is just so incredibly handy. Uh, you know, in particular, one of the things that I didn't realize is just how nice it was to be able to message, uh, do Zoom calls and do Facebook chats with our family, especially during the pandemic. You know, uh, Karen was able to video chat uh, with her mom, with Sierra, and I was able to talk to my parents and we were able to keep in touch with other friends and family. Uh, so from that part, uh, that's that's definitely uh, a positive there. Um, there's a follow-up from Segundo along the same lines. Have you noticed crews spending more time on phones or watching movies than in the past? I'm curious to hear how it may detract from the sailing experience. Yeah, it's interesting. You know, I, before we even had the dome, we used to notice this phenomenon where as we were ending a passage and getting close to land, of course, all the phones start getting mobile signal, people start getting messages, and then you you kind of like lose the crew and everybody just gets absorbed into their phone right away for like the last, you know, two or three hours of the sail, which is a real shame. Now that we have the dome because we're able to check it, I think people are a little bit less likely to do that because I can say, hey guys, I'm gonna turn the dome on for 30, 45 minutes. If you wanna like say hi to your family or let them know what's going on or check your messages, do that. And so it's it's more of doing it a little bit of time instead of like letting it uh, build up. And um, uh, actually, I, I really don't don't think uh, that I, I see it as a, as a real negative thing um, at all. Uh, more time watching movies than in the past. Yeah, maybe, you know, I, I <laughs> at night, sometimes after the day is done, I like to sit down and, and watch a little something. We used to do that uh, by downloading a bunch of movies uh, onto hard drives and then watching it from hard drives. But now uh, that we can just stream it, um, it's actually a lot more convenient and nice. So I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy about that. Uh, it's also been pretty cool because we can, uh, we're trying to teach Sierra bilingual. And so, uh, you know, Kaza can uh, download or uh, look at uh, Swedish content. And so she can kind of like listen to cartoons and Curious George in Swedish, um, which is pretty cool. Uh, Bruce Perry, do you still use any local Wi-Fi or SIM cards or only Viasat now? Yeah, since we've had this system, um, we only use the Viasat. We, we didn't buy a local SIM card uh, in you know Mexico or in Panama uh, or anywhere else. It just works so well. You know, even when we were at the marina in Mexico and Panama too, they both provided Wi-Fi. And it turns out that the Viasat connection was faster than the local marina Wi-Fi. And so we would just sit there at the dock and use that because it was faster. And when everybody else was uh, trying to share the same bandwidth, we had ours all to ourselves, which is pretty cool. Uh, George Bean, uh, I've heard other cruisers can only connect to Delos' internet when anchored on your starboard side. Why is that? Does it include a Wi-Fi base inside the antenna? Um, I think I kind of answered that already. It's just basically we're using a standard uh, a Netgear router and it's on the starboard side. So that's why it works better for our friends that like to share the internet. Would you consider giving up the Iridium Go? Is your SSB still viable or has it been ignored due to Viasat? Um, well, I we keep the Iridium Go. We still have an active uh, subscription. We keep it as a backup because you know when doing long passages, weather uh, is ultra important for us. So we haven't used it since we got the Vias system. It's kind of there in standby. Should we ever need to use it? Um, the SSB is the backup to the backup. So, you know, Viasat number one system we use for everything. Iridium Go is our backup plan. And then the SSB is the backup to the backup. So now the SSB is a lot of fun. 
uh, but I haven't I haven't used it since we had this system on board. Um, Matt and Mir asked how plug and play was the installation? Could a non-technical user get it up and running without needing to install it and configure a separate router? You know, there's two parts of the installation. Number one is the installation of the equipment itself, which you know includes the mounting of the dome, the running of the cabling, uh, the installation of the antennas, the server rack, and all that stuff. And then there's the actual uh, configuration of the software, which um, you know I was able to do quite a bit of the installation of the the, the hardware uh, components. But then having the guys from Viasat here to configure the system, to, to get it working, to uh, configure everything, um, I really don't know. I, I wouldn't have the capability to do that. So um, I, I think that's more of like a, an installation thing from uh, Viasat or a representative probably. Uh, Nathan Kramer says, does Viasat plan on trying to downsize the dish for smaller rigs? It seems big even for Delos, which is true and would be downright massive on a 30 to 40 footer. Uh, so yes, uh, that has been one of the plans from day one is to work with the team to first of all, figure out like, is this system even viable to put on a boat of this size? Uh, since we've installed it, there's been numerous uh, pieces of feedback that we've provided that the team has now incorporated into the new systems that they're installing on other boats, still mostly larger boats, super yachts, commercial vessels. I'm talking from our contacts at Viasat, they are really interested in that market, uh, the cruiser market, also the smaller commercial boat market, like you know, uh, fishing boats, like uh, surveying boats, things like that, because it's just such a useful service to have. The team uh, did not provide any roadmap uh, time estimate or anything like that. So I don't have an ETA um, or any concrete plans or anything that I can tell you, unfortunately. Uh, Follow up from Glenn Kimball. Can you break down the initial cost and monthly costs? Yeah, right, right down to the brass tax. So I think right now it's worth mentioning that the service is really tailored for larger boats, uh, for super yachts, commercial vessels, and the prices reflect this. I think it's an incredibly challenging problem to provide, like you know, broadband, high quality, class of service internet anywhere uh, at sea while moving. Uh, there's not very many people that do it. Viaset happens to be one of those. Uh, and because it is targeted at larger uh, uh, boats and in high demand, the costs for the equipment uh, are pretty high. Um, if you, I just did a quick Google search uh, for a Sailor 600. Uh, you'll see prices of around 35 grand uh, for the equipment uh, itself. I don't know what the other equipment costs, that's for the Sailor uh, 600 and I believe the antenna control unit. Um, airtime starts out costing you about $1,600 a month for a basic 110 gigabyte plan and it sort of goes up from there. So uh, it's a high demand service, it's a high uh, classes service, um, it's targeted at larger boats and because of that the, the cost is still high. I do know the team is working on you know packages and plans that are gonna be able to scale that down and allow it to be used uh, for normal cruisers because I actually don't think that that equipment and those monthly costs are affordable for, uh, for most people doing this. It just probably wouldn't make sense. All right, so that was uh, the questions that I had. Um, if you have any other questions, uh, pop them in the comments below. Uh, I will do my best to answer them. Thank you so much for watching and uh, I hope you found it informative. You know, we've really enjoyed uh, testing the system uh, and being able to provide uh, feedback and working with the Viasat team. So a huge thank you guys for uh, supporting us and allowing us to work with you uh, and uh, provide feedback. And we hope that it's able to help uh, others get the, the same system and get on to, to more boats out there. All right, thank you for watching guys. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel and uh, have an amazing day. Bye.